you know, there are people who are wondering, well, you know, why are you remote this week? Is it because you have that sort of panic in your heart? And the answer to that is absolutely no. Uh, we we started talking about this maybe two or three weeks ago, and we considered a couple of things. One of those things that was really important to us was the governor's travel order. So, you know, people like to travel and be with their family and friends over the Thanksgiving holiday, but upon their return, they would need to be tested. So in that situation, we were really not sure how many people were going to be able to come to school, you know, never mind, you know, just willing, but, but there's that whole thing about you're just not allowed to do it until you have a negative COVID test. Um, and then the other thing that we wondered about, and this really came in with really nice collaboration, I think, with the Department of Public Health, with Sean McAuliffe and Casey Morrow in town. So, you know, thinking about the incubation period, if there were people who were, you know, eating and masks off and kind of, you know, really socializing with family and friends on Thanksgiving, if you look about a week out, you know, and people might start testing positive, these would be the days that that would be happening. And one of the things I always worry about is we have kids who are considered to be close contact. So a child who's done nothing more than come to school, but maybe sat next to a student who has tested positive. At the elementary levels, that's not such a big deal because we can take a whole class and just say, you'll be remote for however many days and then bring that class back while the rest of the school functions normally. But at the high school, for example, it's very challenging because a student could go to English class, class, math class, science class, social studies, and create four or five close contacts in each one of those places, or maybe just one or maybe none. But at the end of the day, after we think about lunch and busing and all of that, we could end up with 30 kids who have to sit home just because they're close contacts. So really, that was the second reason why we shut our doors this week. Mm. And I'll tell you, I don't know. I don't know if you have like a special line in to Dr. Fauci or anything like that, but I'll be honest with you. I really understood it. You surveyed the school community to see what was going to be happening over the Thanksgiving break. And with that information, decided that it was best to take a week to see if there was any type of outbreak. And I, I'll be honest with you, I said, why one week when they say you have to quarantine for 14 days? And then just this past week, the CDC is talking about reducing the length of time that you need for a quarantine. And now they're thinking like they're recommending in certain situations from seven to 10 days. And if you think about Thanksgiving, seven, eight, nine, 10, that's 10 days before school starts. So I think that you would probably would get a pretty good indication by then if something was arising. Yes, and it's hard to know if today's, I mean, you, I'm sure the whole world knows that today was the day that we had the highest count ever in the United States. Um, I'm sorry, in Massachusetts. So, you know, you get to that place where you say, is that a result of Thanksgiving? And that's really the kind of planning that we had done. So when we had 4,613 cases today in Massachusetts, you know, I don't know if that's a result of Thanksgiving, but logic would dictate that it was. You know, I don't have scientific evidence. Um, and that's really the kind of thinking that we were doing as we planned around this. So hopefully by next Sunday, the if there's sort of a preponderance of positive cases as a result of Thanksgiving, we'll know who those people are. And those will be people who learn remotely while their peers will come into school.